Greetings and welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Kinston, North Carolina. Welcome to God's house, where it's good for us to be together in this way, to offer our gifts of praise and thanksgiving to our Lord. My name is Tom Warren, and I have the privilege of serving as the rector here at St. Mary's, and I welcome you on this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter. The fourth Sunday of Easter is called Good Shepherd Sunday. As we read uh, from scriptures appointed for today, you'll find out why, if you don't already know. Um, I also want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of us who celebrate the gift of life that has been given to us by God through our mothers, and of course, especially to those who are mothers among us. God bless you in your ministry of love and care and nurture of the children uh, that are placed in your care. If you haven't already, I invite you to pull up a worship bulletin uh, that will help guide you through our liturgy together today. There's a link to it in the description to this bulletin, uh, to this video. Um, uh, of course, it'll help guide you through the, the worship service itself, but at the back of it, I also hope that you'll spend a moment paying attention to the announcements pertaining to life and ministry with St. Mary's Church. Uh, there's a lot going on here uh, as we approach the end of the program year in the spring season and then looking ahead to the summer um, that I hope you'll take a, a moment to read about and discern as uh, if God is calling you to participate in some way. Um, but of course, I'm just grateful that we get to share this time together. I pray that no matter where you are and what your life is holding, that you hear a word of life and encouragement for you as you seek to live your life of faith today. Welcome. <laughs> Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 23 as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the book of the Revelation to John. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne 
will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation and thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. For you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Mark Twain once wrote, My mother had a great deal of trouble with me but I think she enjoyed it. Now, while I don't know anything about Mark Twain's mother, from what I do know about him, I can imagine that she certainly had her hands full. But really, what mother doesn't? God bless our mothers. God bless them for the ways in which they participated in giving us God's incredible gift of life. God bless them in the ways that they put up with us. Thank God for all of the ways that we have been nurtured and taught and disciplined and guided by our mothers, yes, but also by by many others. You know, we in the church, we have a special understanding of what it means to be a parent. There is the biological sense of parenthood. There is the parenthood of a household that, of course, is primary. No one has more influence or impact on a child than their parents in good ways or in other ways. But Jesus has given his followers a much broader understanding of the responsibilities of parenting. Just think about whenever we celebrate a baptism. There are the parents, there are the sponsors, the godparents who take on special commitments, but then we are all asked this question, Will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power, do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? And the expected answer is, we will. God has called all of us to share in the parenting responsibilities with the children and the mothers and the fathers all around us. And that is so important because, my goodness, us kids, all of us, we are a real handful. And I'll just say that for all of you folks who know that today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, it is Good Shepherd Sunday, there is a pun in there. All of us kids, we are a handful. Today we are all referred to as kids, right, as as sheep Today, the church draws on the imagery from scriptures that describe our relationship with God in words of sheep and shepherd. Today, we read from, arguably, the most famous shepherd passage of all of scripture, right? The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. In the reading from Acts, one of the early chief shepherds of the church, Peter, is called to tend to and to care for a community in grief. And then, as we do every year on this Sunday, we read from a portion of the 10th chapter of John's 
gospel, where Jesus uses the illustration of sheep and shepherd to explain our dependence on a healthy relationship with God, and specifically with Jesus, in order to truly live. And in this portion of the chapter that we read this year, Jesus makes clear that he is the shepherd of the sheep. I want to focus on two verses from what he said in this passage. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Today, as we focus on these passages, I want us to hear this incredible good news in these five promises that are contained in these two verses. Five promises that we, his sheep, are blessed to hear and to take to heart. The first is a promise of presence. My sheep, hear my voice. Friends, the Lord is close to you. Close enough for you to hear. Close enough for you to sense. And he speaks into your life. What is implied here in this passage is that the sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd. If you live around sheep, right, actual ba-ba sheep, right, if you, if you know how they interact with their shepherds, then you get this, right? The people who heard Jesus tell this story, speak these words, they did. They understood this imagery. They know that sheep will not follow a stranger. If any of us were to go up to a flock of sheep that does have a shepherd, and we tried to call them, they would be unconvinced. They would not follow us. <laughs> but the shepherd, all the shepherd has to do is to come within earshot and make his familiar call, and they will lift their heads in recognition, and they will follow. Don't believe me? Just pull it up on YouTube, right? There's plenty of videos out there. They're, they're pretty funny and entertaining to watch. And for those of us who don't know much about sheep, right, there is a similar illustration to be made, uh, maybe one that would be more familiar to you. Take the family dog, for instance. A good family dog may be quite friendly to friends or to visitors to a home. She may wag her tail and let you pet her and even hang out with you for a while. But, but when the voice of the one who takes care of her calls, especially the voice of the one who feeds her, right? you know where she is headed. <laughs> she knows that voice, and she will follow. Jesus is the good shepherd. We know his voice. It's a trustworthy voice. It's the voice that speaks life. It's a voice that builds up. It's a voice that beckons you into the light where you can see clearly the beauty of the world all around you as well as the obstacles that threaten along the path. It's the voice that speaks truth and encourages you to reflect that truth in the way that you live, sharing that truth in love. It's the voice that urges you to care for others and to be willing to sacrifice, to give of yourself for their benefit and their well-being. This voice speaks to us. That is a promise. As Christians mature, but, but even before we all come to full maturity in Christ, he speaks to us. Right? There are so many examples of this. You may have what appears to be a random thought of a person that you haven't seen or been in communication with in ages. Or you might have in your heart the suggestion of an action. Call this person or drop a note to that person or give this person a gift or, or swing by this person's workplace or home. And if we respond, sometimes we find out why that name or situation was placed on our heart in that particular way, at that particular time. And while we might suspect that we know the reason, oftentimes, at least in my experience, it is very different from what I had expected when this realization comes to be. This is the voice of the shepherd at work in our lives. He speaks to us. He is alive in this world. It is just one of the many ways that God works. 
the, the second promise is a promise of intimacy. Jesus says of the sheep, I know them. He knows the sheep by name. He knows your name and calls you by name. It's an incredible thing to be known by name, isn't it? Sometimes it is surprising. You know, many people are graduating uh, in this season of year, this time of year. And, and this promise of God in this passage reminds me of my very first day in my college chemistry class at the Coast Guard Academy. They call freshmen at the Coast Guard Academy swabs. You, you think it's uh, an, insult, an insult to be called a sheep? Well, try swab on for size. It's not meant to make you feel very good or uplifted. And, and the very first day of class comes along and in walks this sharp and polished lieutenant, which to us was a rank of great power and authority. And without looking at a roster, he looked at each of us and one at a time, welcomed us by name. Not only our last name, which was on our uniform, right, but our first name, which he had apparently memorized along with our pictures, so he knew who was who. Right, I'll never forget that, being called by name by Lieutenant Kowak, a very special teacher. Now, as cool as that story is, let it sink in that Jesus knows you by name. Right? The fact that God Almighty, the creator of all, the Alpha and the Omega, knows your name, knows everything about you, is one way of saying that God loves you in ways that words cannot fully describe. I know my sheep. That is another promise of God. The third promise from this passage today is a promise of guidance. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Right, guidance. We don't need to know all of the steps down the road of life, only the next one. What is the next right thing to which we are called to do? What is the Lord asking me to do now, today? It's okay if we don't have all the details clearly known in advance when we know and we trust the one who calls us to follow. Who among us could have predicted every step along the way that has led us to where we are right now? None of us, of course. But we can have peace in following the shepherd's call, one step at a time. Today's motion for today. Because thankfully we do know where they all eventually lead. The final destination as we heard described in the Revelation to John in that passage that we read together today, that heavenly gathering. I love how the book of Acts is one example after another, after another, after another, uh, of how God works like this. How the faithful of God hear and respond to the call of the shepherd's voice. This morning, we heard about a need among the people of the church in Joppa. And, and so they reach out to Peter, who had followed God's call to Lydda, which was not so far from Joppa. And he doesn't know all the details of why he was called there, but he answers the call to come and to be among them in their time of crisis. And you heard the amazing power of God at work in that brief period of time that they share together. But then, if you keep reading in the book of Acts, Peter is called to go from there to minister to a, a, a centurion named uh, Cornelius in a place called Caesarea. And from there, he goes eventually to Rome. Peter was obedient to God, not in one big call to all of these places, but one step at a time. Not knowing all the details, but recognizing God's voice and trusting God's call. And that is a promise for us, that God's call to us to move forward in life is one that is with purpose and intention to be a part of God's kingdom work. It is a promise of guidance. The fourth promise is an Easter promise. Jesus says, I will give them eternal life and they will never perish. Easter is the season that we especially celebrate this gift of real life, of eternal life, of true life. 
Because for us, earthly death is not the end, but a transition, the gateway to eternal life. I once heard it said that if you're not afraid about dying, then you can be really alive. Because then there is no person or group or circumstance or illness or whatever that can so scare or intimidate you from doing what the Lord asks you to do. We have the promise of eternal life, so we don't have to be afraid of anything. And the fifth promise is one of protection. Jesus says, No one shall snatch them out of my hand. This, of course, goes right in line with the last promise of eternal life. A promise that is affirmed in baptism. This gift of life that is always offered and will never be taken away. It may be rejected, as any gift might be, but it cannot in any other way be snatched away. You are protected. Presence, intimacy, guidance, eternal life, and protection. There are many, many more promises in Scripture, but these five are pretty incredible for just two verses, don't you think? And if you're looking for a couple of verses to memorize and carry with you in your heart wherever you go, these would be a pretty great couple verses to include. Friends, you may not like the idea of being called a sheep, but with a shepherd who makes and keeps promises like these, I pray that we may find comfort in this illustration of being a sheep with the Good Shepherd. May this good news be a blessing to you on this and every day to come. I've said these things to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people as found in form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding Bishop, Rob, our diocesan Bishop, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and Don, our mayor, and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those named on the St. Mary's Church prayer list. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Joanne Chapman, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the acolytes of St. Mary's Church. We ask you, Lord, to fill all who serve in the sanctuary at your altar with your Holy Spirit, that in living out this calling, they may be help, they may help others to worship you and be strengthened to be faithful witnesses to your gospel in all parts of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for all of the ways in which you show your loving care to us. And especially on this Mother's Day, we pray for all the mothers that are among us today. We pray for those living and those who have passed away. We pray for the mothers who have loved us and for those, of course, who have fallen short of loving fully. We pray for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for all those whose hopes to have children have been frustrated. We pray for all mothers who have lost their children, and for all people, regardless of gender, who have, out of unique circumstances, offered motherly care to others in some way. Guide us all, Lord, uh, as we seek to live into your call uh, to Support the children in our lives and the parents in our lives, the mothers in our communities, that we might indeed be a community that reflects your grace and your love and your relationship that you would have us share that would be glorifying to you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Dear friends, I invite you now to join in an act of spiritual communion, whereby we seek with heart and body to make our full communion with God, beginning with the words our Lord himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
please pray with me. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.